I would have never had guessed that we would be doing a teaching series here at Cornerstone that had the word politics in the title, but here we are, Chris. Uh, Jesus and Politics, part one. Thanks so much for kicking us off. Mm -hmm. I do have a question for you right off the bat, because yes. in the past couple months, I've had conversations with folks who have taken their, I don't know, their party's platform or their side's opinion on a political issue, and then they hold it up against the Bible or against the words mm -hmm. and actions of Jesus and decide that their opinion, mm -hmm. their side lines up really well with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But on both sides, how, what causes that? Well, yeah, I mean, what causes that is, is it's, and that's normal, right? I mean, that's normal in human experience, um, is that we take kind of our cultural, the way we grew up and our culture and our political views, and we interpret everything, including the Bible, through that lens because it, it feels so at home to us, it's so normal to us. And what's difficult about interpretation of Scripture is learning, and it's a process, the ability to not view Scripture through your own political or cultural lens, and that's hard to do. And our attempt at Cornerstone is to view scripture through the lens of the words and actions of Jesus. And so as we read about Jesus and learn about him and get to know him more and more, that provides us with a lens through which to look at the rest of scripture in a way that is really removed from cultural worldview and political worldview as much as possible. But that's hard to do, um, but that's, that's our goal. Um, and then equipping and discipling people on how they can do that as well. Um, I, always, I always thought that I was already there, that my point of view or my lens or whatever is actually the correct one. Right, yes. Well, And then come to find out that I'm actually looking through probably the lens of a political party. A I, political I did party. for, I, and I still do, like I mm -hmm. still wrestle with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's still a journey that I'm on and I had a political worldview that absolutely affected my view of scripture, right? It, it, you know, you can make the scriptures mean all sorts of things sure. depending on what lens you're reading them through. Um, and same with world events, right? You know, you yeah. get two people looking at it from different lenses and they're going to see the same world event from the opposite perspective because they're looking at it through a different set of lenses. And so how do we as the church, you know, look at it through the lens of, of Christ or through a kingdom of heaven lens is a difficult task, but it's a task we're called to. But that's why there's such great division in the church is because we're looking at the same scriptures or the same world events through completely opposite lenses, which hence leads to the division and churches dividing and all that we've been through over the last several years. Ah, I like the I like the change. I like the change of putting putting scripture before these lenses, or really trying to take our lens off. But that's going to be it's yeah. going to be a journey. How long it did you say journey. you've been on this journey? I don't know, seven, eight years. Yeah. I feel like yeah. there wasn't a moment where I'm right. like, like it was. It's been it's been a journey, so it was a slow progression. All of a sudden, yeah. you're thinking, "Am I doing this correctly?" Um, I have a question: How can we practically apply Jesus' approach to politics in our daily lives, especially when we're faced with I don't know, challenging political conversations uh, or decisions? Can you share a personal example of where you've had to apply these teachings? in these last couple of years? Yeah, well, one of the things that's like relevant to 2024, and I, and I referenced this a little bit in the message, is I, I want to have a different heart and posture towards the election year in the way the peace that I have, the way that I talk with people of all sorts of different opinions. Um, I wanna have more freedom. I wanna have more peace in how I do that. I want my hope to not be as tied to the results of this election. Um, because the kingdom of heaven is an unstoppable force that is victorious and will be victorious regardless of this election. And so um, I can actually view myself as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven that is advancing regardless of whether this election goes one way or the other. So that's a change that I want to see in myself this election year versus I wasn't as good at that four years ago, if that makes sense. Absolutely. It's hard not to become so evangelical, if we can use that word, about um, the, the better way of interpreting scripture and then th seeing through that lens, seeing world events or political events, whatever, and to become really evangelical and mad about people who don't do it exactly the way you do it. Yeah. And I don't want to become like that either. I think that's a trap. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we don't want to be too arrogant with like, hey, now we've figured out the right. Jesus way to figure, use right. scriptures and we still have, we always have the right answer. Um, you have to hold this with humility because we're still learning how to do this. Um, and, and there's a danger of becoming overly prideful with our, our, 
new way of using Jesus yes. as the lens. We're pretty certain the, that this is the yeah, way. Which which I, I do feel confident in, sure. but there also is, is a humility required. Well, it would be nice to, for us to, to, to watch this video like seven years from now, us sitting here yeah. and be laughing like, really? <laughs> we idiot. set this? Yeah. We recorded this? We sent this out. Um, so we've got a four week series, Chris, yeah. on Jesus and politics. What is your hope for us as the church? This group of Jesus followers that you're called to lead uh, as we walk through this series, what's, what's your hope for us? Well, I hope that we all would have more peace and that we'd live in a more joyful and loving way this year. Um, I, I, I hope that would mark us and that this series would help set us up to do that better. So as we interact with the world around us, we're more winsome. Um, the church has been repelling people for a while now and attendance numbers are going down across every denomination, across the whole country. And I believe a, a big part of that is the way that the church has so deeply embedded itself in politics and power. And if we were to do it in a different way in the way Jesus did it, I believe it would be winsome to our culture. I believe it will draw our culture into yes. the church and into the love of Christ, as opposed to like making them disgusted with the church and wanting to have nothing to do with Jesus. And so personally, I hope we each have individual, like more hope and peacefulness in the way we approach an election year. Um, but then I hope that affects the culture in a, in a broader way if, if we can do our small part in doing that well. I love that. And I think you love that too. And uh, we're here for that. Uh, as, as Chris said, this, you know, when Jesus came, this is good news. And uh, let's make sure that we live like that, especially going into an election year. I'm so glad you're here for that. I hope to see you again next time.